It's just too far. It just wouldn't cut me out. I'll go right out there and just wouldn't want to cut me out. Once you know what Smilax or Greenbrier is, make sure you can identify it first. If you want to learn more about the Lyme disease thing, you can just go on to any kind of a uh, Google search. Always remember, if you've got the original box or packaging with it, it may make it more valuable. Welcome to A Sportsman's Life. We're so glad you tuned in to join us for another exciting real-world outdoor adventure right here on A Sportsman's Life. It's just too far. It just wouldn't cut me out. I'll go right out there and just wouldn't want to cut me out.
I didn't think it was going to come together. But it, I was wondering myself, I'll tell you. Way to go, sir. Good shot, too. Gobbler for about two hours, and I said, I, <laughs> I wasn't going to miss this chance. No, no, so. no, no, no. Heavens, no. Like I told you, if you get a chance to kill him, don't worry about cameras or anything else. Let's get him on the ground. My first Easter, and I'm very excited. First about Easter, congratulations. He's been by here three times, you know it. <laughs> you finally got him, didn't you? I finally did. After a day and a half, but we've had a lot of close encounters, but we finally, finally uh, got it done today. We'd rather be lucky than good any day. Yeah. We got lucky because he came back three times. <laughs> <laughs> Finally got close enough. Brought to you by Dallas Safari Club, conservation, education, and hunter advocacy. Hornaday, accurate, deadly, dependable. Taurus Firearms, maker of the Raging Hunter. Stealth Vision, high-tech precision driven equipment tailored for the modern hunter. That's gum, green briar. Folks, most of you hate green briar, Smilax. Deer love it. I'm in a patch of it right now. And I'm gonna tell you something about green briar that you may not know. You may, but you may not. Uh, first, you, ought, you need to be able to identify green briar. Uh, well, here's a dead, a dead piece of it right here. Lots of lots of thorns on green briar, a lot of them. And when they're in the green state, like this, they'll trip you up in the woods. Now, here's what I'm going to show you that you don't know. Okay, this is a this is a a leaf of green briar, right here. Kind of a heart-shaped leaf. Let me give you a better look. Okay, so there's a green briar leaf, heart-shaped. Okay, the plant, the, the stem itself gets the thorns on it, and it gets, it'll trip you up big time. But this is, this tender shoot is really, really good eating, and it tastes somewhat like asparagus. Let me show you. You can just, see, it break it off. It's real tender. Like asparagus, break it back to wherever you can break it. You keep going back, it's going to get tough. This right here, friends, once you know what Smilax or Greenbrier is, make sure you can identify it first. Very tasty. A little citrusy, almost like, almost like asparagus. You can cook this, but the little tips is what you want right here. I kid Larry, when you're in deer country, I'm actually out behind the house now. There's no deer right here. But when you're in deer country, there'll be a browse line. This, this would be gone. They, the deer eat it down to the browse line. I kid Larry, I'm about 6'1". There's a browse line out here about six foot one. Folks, on to the rest of our show. I thought this might be something you might want to try. Next time you're in Greenbrier, you get all tripped up like I am right here. My boots are tied up in, a, in the vine. Break off one of these little pieces like this right here. And sample it. I think you'll like it. Now on to the rest of our show, friends. Hunting season is coming on, or even if it's not hunting season, ticks are everywhere. And ticks a lot of times cause a lot of different problems. I mean, they're, they'll make you itch for a long, long time. But uh, there's also such a thing as called Lyme disease. It started up in Pennsylvania years ago. Lyme disease is spread all over North America. And it is a serious disease that you can get from a tick bite. Generally, if you get bitten by a tick and you see kind of a rosette forming on you, that's a sure sign that you've got, probably got it. You want to get to the doctor as soon as quickly as you can because there are treatments available if you get to them very quickly. 
But sometimes, too, you may get a tick bite and it won't even show that rosette and you could still have Lyme's disease. Lyme's disease is kind of like a, a flu sometimes to start with, but it also can manifest in a lot of different ways to where you end up having bath, bad arthritis problems, breathing problems, heart problems, all those kind of things. It mimics lots of different diseases. Anytime you go out, you need to look for ticks regardless. And with deer populations and the wildlife populations that we have now in some of the small communities, the, the rural areas, of course, but also some of the suburbs, lots of ticks in those areas. So you want to check yourself for ticks when you come in. If you're going to pull one off, take a pair of tweezers, get all the way down to the bottom as close as you can to where the tick is attached and pull it off. And, uh, but you know what I try to do is there are two things I don't like, or three things, mosquitoes, ticks, and chiggers. Now if you live in the south and even some parts of the southeast and the north you know what chiggers are. They'll itch and bite for, seem like for days. The way that you get away from that is to use this product right here. It's called a Sawyer's Insect Repellent. It is a permethrin. It's an odorless permethrin. This kills ticks on as soon as it contacts. Now you don't put it on yourself. You put it on your clothing. You spray it on the clothing and uh, it comes with available in several different sizes. This just happens to be one that's a uh, it's set up for it says it treats two garments completely so you just kind of spray it on and let it dry and then you can wear your clothes right after that but again you don't want to spray it on your body you want to spray it on your clothing uh, underwear socks pants shirt I put it on my hat caps all those kind of things and essentially what it does it kills that tick as soon as it gets into that area where that permethrin is I've, I've hunted in parts of Africa where fever ticks were horrible to the point to where you'd look down at a pair of pants like this and it would turn from this color to dark brown there'd be so many ticks and with that spray on there with the permethrin spray that I've used I never had any problem with any of the ticks never got a tick bite rode around in chigger beds where I should have gotten covered up with chiggers and didn't so if you get a chance if you're going to spend any time outside and I'm talking about even in the edge of the cities right now because with schools out no schools going on kids are spending a lot of times you know maybe in the, the little creek bottoms a little backyard type thing they can get the ticks right there and there's probably about this it's been said there's upwards to 200 kids a day that come down with Lyme disease and that can be a very debilitating disease as I mentioned it can kill you if you don't take care of it there are some treatments available you can look if you want to learn more about the Lyme disease thing you can just go on to any kind of a uh, Google search or whatever and just type in L-Y-M-E disease. Just spray it on until it gets good and wet and then turn it over and spray all, all the clothing. I, a lot of times too if I'm going to be in an area, if I'm going to not be wearing tall boots what I'll do is I'll open up the pant and I'll spray on the inside as well too. Again this will kill that tick or that chigger and it also keeps mosquitoes away so can be found just about anywhere. I usually go to Walmart, Bass Pro, Cabela's. Almost any place that sells camping equipment will sell this right here and it's called Sawyer's Insect Repellent but you want it to be the permethrin. Be sure it says P-E-R-M-E-T-H-R-I-N. That's going to make all the difference in the world. A Sportsman's Life is also brought to you by Mossberg. American built, American strong. The Wyo Steakhouse catch and release apparel, AGM Global Vision, your go-to for thermal hunting scopes and spotters, Pyramid Air, your one-stop shop for everything air guns, and Vineyard Max Deer Products. Hello folks, it's Bill, the old man at Striper Express, with your fishing tip this week on a sportsman's life. It's April 19th. Top water has started. Top water has started. It's lovely. We live for it. We have a 12 month season, but we're all ready for this. Usually it starts in May. It started a week ago in April. I want to show you my all time favorite go to top water bait. That is the Cotton Cordell 6 inch pencil popper. Okay, I'm going to show you how to use it. Just like a face on a clock 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Leave just a little bit hanging like that, do that. Get it out there. You can throw it over the moon. Nothing like this, nothing like this, just the thing will go a country mile and you know it will. Okay, when the fish, you're fishing now, watch my hands. This is where I retrieve. I'm popping. I'm popping with a tight line. 
boom, fish hits it. He misses it. Okay, I stop. I tighten the line a little bit, and I just do this. And it makes those BBs go rattle, and that fish, boom, hits it, and he's all yours. Okay, that's fishing him onto the hook. That's a good trick. Number one rule in topwater fishing is do not set the hook until you feel the fish pull back. I'm telling you, they come in faster than they went out. We call it incoming rounds. It's very exciting fishing, so you got to calm down, let that fish take it, twitch it if he misses it. Sometimes they got their mouth open and they catch it like it's in center field. Kapow! That's lovely. But fish them under the hook, wait till you feel the pull, and it's topwater time. They're surfacing all over the place. Go have some fun. What do we say? And go catch a fish. You know, sometimes just getting out with uh, your family on the weekends, and if you're not going to be out hunting or fishing or doing something like that, maybe you're hitting a flea market or going to garage sales or antique malls or whatever. And you know, recently I was out with my wife, and we uh, we were at a flea market, and I ran across a fishing lure. Now, as you can see behind me, I've got a lot of fishing lures, but you know, I thought I'd share with you, take just take a little time to share with you what to look for when I buy a lure. I'm not going to go out there and spend a whole lot of money on lures. I've been collecting them for many years, but I try to get them at, at a bargain, and of course, they make a great display. But anyway, I picked up this lure for $20, and you know, it's like new in the box, and, and that's exactly what you want to look for, something that is really looks new in the box. As you can see, this is a, a Creek Chub Dingbat, it has horse hair on the back, very shiny coat. I mean, the paint is perfect. You flip it over, you can read, actually read, dingbat on there. You can see the screws are good. You can see everything. The glass eyes are not cracked. Uh, this one, I would say, is in new condition. The box mm, got a little tear in the corner there, just a little bit, but it's the right box. So the interesting thing about this is if you can pick up a lure like this for 20 bucks or so, I'm telling you, jump on it because these things are going up in value and getting harder and harder to find. Always remember, if you've got the original box or packaging with it, it may make it more valuable. Get into it. There's a lot of different kinds of lures. Some people like to you know, collect one kind of lure, but they want all the colors. Or maybe someone wants to collect just kind of novelty lures. I've seen collectors do a lot of different things, but I just pick them up along the way and hang them on the wall. I think they're neat to look at. A great way to get an idea of the value of lures is to either pick up books on collecting old lures or seek out information on the internet. There are several Facebook groups out there devoted to buying, selling, and trading of old tackle. The hobby of collecting old fishing lures is fascinating. It's amazing to see the ingenuity that the creators of many lures have put into their lure that was marketed to anglers promising to put more fish on your stringer. Folks, this segment was brought to us by Gearhead Archery, Smoke Intex Electric Smokers, Snaplock Hunting Blinds, Y.O. Ranch Headquarters, Ultramatic Feeders, and Catfish Pro. Tune in next week for some more real-world outdoor adventures right here on A Sportsman's Life.